Good morning, St. Martin's family. It's wonderful to be with you this morning. As you know, we're continuing with our series. It starts with me. Delighted that Mandy has a wonderful message that she'll be sharing with us this morning. Let us pray. Today we come to glorify you and thank you for all that you have done for us, Lord. As we begin today's church service, we ask your protection from everything in the world that is not of you and pray that only your will be done on earth. We ask that you bless us and future generations with your presence. Help us to be more accepting of one another and who we are. Let it start with us, Lord, today. Amen. Let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own faults in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. 
We confess that we have labeled others, giving some stars and others black dots. We have not treated others as you treat us. We have formed judgments and let those judgments and the judgments of others determine how we treat those made in your image. Forgive us, Lord. We have not seen others as you see them. Give us eyes to see. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Just before I pray the absolution, we reflect on these words from 1 John 4, reminding us that it is in loving one another that God's love in us is made complete, empowered by his Spirit. Father, forgive us our sins and set us free from them. Send the Holy Spirit into us that he may give us power to live as those who love one another and see them as Jesus sees us, completing your love in us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Mark chapter 2, reading from verses 15 to 17. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel reading is taken from Luke chapter 19, reading from verses 1 to 10. Zacchaeus the tax collector. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and save the lost. Good morning everyone. We're in our second part of our series, It Starts With Me. And I'm really excited about this journey that God is taking us on. We've got, I think it's around seven churches linked in, a number of home groups, even in Australia and the UK. So a warm welcome to everyone. Shall we pray as we start? Lord God, we are reminded this morning that you see through the outside. You see through our black dots and our gold stars. Lord, you see the person you created us to be and you call that person out. Lord, this morning, would you give us a fresh revelation? Your eyes to see others, to see ourselves, and most importantly, to see you, that we may respond to you with our whole hearts. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. After last week, I received this picture drawn by a 13-year-old, believe it or not, at North Durban Presbyterian as a response to the message. And it says on it, respect the people for who they are, Honour them in their loves, beliefs, hopes and dreams. Isn't that great? Steve, my husband, entitled this picture Respectacles. Jesus needs to give us his respectacles 
to see others. I want to invite every one of us after the message to do our own picture in response. Or maybe it's a poem or a prayer or even a song as a response to what the Holy Spirit is working in us. And it's amazing how powerfully God uses that when we respond and use his creative gifts to encourage others. So you might want to send it through to your minister, send it through to myself. My details will be at the end of the message or post it on your church's Facebook page and tag the Bombay Project. You don't need to put your name on it, but it's just a wonderful way of blessing each other, encouraging each other. So last week, we were challenged to see like Jesus does. And just like this bottle labeled poison, the outside doesn't always reflect the inside. We journeyed with the Samaritan woman and all her dots of inadequacy and failure and shame. We saw Jesus, though, speaking directly past those black dots into her deep, deep inner thirst and her need for love and acceptance. We saw the impact of that. Not only did we see the black dots falling off her, but we saw this woman running to those that she had previously run away from. She just couldn't stop it. She had to tell them the good news of Jesus and bring them to him. It's a story of freedom and life. And it's that same story that Jesus would speak into each one of our hearts as he would cause the labels that we have on us, the black dots, to fall off. Today we're going to journey more with two other people. But before we do, I want to air a bit of my frustration. So this week, one of our special stars, that's what we call our orphans and vulnerable children in Bombay, came running to me. They were so excited. They had just come into a huge amount of money and they didn't have a bank account. So they wanted my help to access it. Of course, it was a scam and I was the one who had to break the bad news to them. When I hear of government misspending of trillions of rands, when I hear of other scams, things like the VBS and other scams, my blood boils. I think if I had to meet one of those scam artists or a corrupt government official, I think it would be messy. The only problem is I think I would be the one coming off second best. I wonder how Jesus would respond to such people. I think I would be really mad if I saw him whining and dining with them. But that's exactly what we see in our story today. We see Jesus with a corrupt government official. One who was taking far more from the poor people than the government required. And he was keeping all the excess for himself. In fact, he had a whole lot of people working for him. And he took his slice from each one of them on top of that. Not only that, he was betraying his own people because he was working for the enemy occupier, the Romans. And this was the promised land. So, in fact, he was working as God's opposition in God's holy land. He was so looked down by the people that he wasn't even allowed into the temple. And that applied to all tax collectors. Can you see the black dots that he's covered in? Yes, there are a few gold stars, but those I think are just from people who didn't want to pay so much taxes. So we're trying to butter him up. He's so desperate to see Jesus, he was a very short man, that he climbs a, a sycamore tree. Can you see him up in that tree, covered in his black dots? That's his identity. Yet he longs to see Jesus. I think there's this deep longing in him for those black dots to disappear. To be given a new identity. We read that Jesus was passing through, but he stops when he gets to that tree. And he looks up. And I want us to look at Three things that Jesus says. And the first is Zacchaeus. He uses Zacchaeus' name. There's something powerful when someone uses your name. You feel noticed. You feel important. Not only that, the word Zacchaeus means pure, clean. So here we see Jesus calling out the image of God through those black dots in Zacchaeus. Jesus goes on to say, I must stay at your house. Jesus was busy. He had things to do, people to meet, places to go. In fact, he was just passing through Jericho, it tells us. And yet, the Spirit's prompting was far more important to him than his own diary pressure. It is the Spirit that leads to his must, not his own agenda. And we must remember that Jesus is actually putting himself on the line. He's putting his reputation on the line by speaking to Zacchaeus. By the very act of speaking to him, he would make himself unclean. 
in the culture at that time, who you shared your table with identified who you were. A shared table was a shared life. So the message that Jesus was speaking through those very words, I must stay at your house, was incredibly powerful. This is the third thing I want to draw your attention to that Jesus said. Nothing. I don't understand it. Jesus knows that Zacchaeus has robbed people blind, yet he doesn't call out this corruption in Zacchaeus. He doesn't tell him he needs to change. Instead, he shares a meal with him, declaring himself to be in the same camp as Zacchaeus. And what is Zacchaeus' response? He declares that he will give back four times what he owes people if he has wrongly taken any money from them. The law required him to give 120%, and yet he gives back 400%. Can you see those black dots? They're falling off him. He doesn't need to hold on to the influence, the wealth, the power anymore because his identity is found in another place. And Jesus declares that he is saved using the word sodzo, which means restored, made whole. His identity is now in Jesus. We come now to the final person. He looks very impressive in his priestly attire. This man fasts, he tithes, he prays and studies God's words and teaches others. Very impressive. Can you see all those gold stars that people have given him? But Jesus calls him a snake. He tells him that he's good on the outside, but a coffin in the inside. This man doesn't want to give up on those gold stars. They're more important to him than following Jesus. He loves to feel admired and important. That is where his identity is. What a contrast this man is to Jesus. This man and other Pharisees like him call people like Zacchaeus sinners, yet Jesus calls them by name and calls out God's image in them. Jesus came to save the lost, not to judge them. The reality is that this Pharisee needed Jesus just as much as Zacchaeus, that he had this deep longing within him. He just didn't realize it. He and other Pharisees like him used the law and church practices to make themselves feel valuable, to give them their identity. Their identity was not proving their own worth in the gold stars that people gave them. While the external acts looked pure, in the inside their hearts were dry and hardened. They needed restoring. Perhaps we see ourselves like Zacchaeus. We ought to aware of the corruption and sin in our lives. And we need to hear Jesus calling us by name this morning. We need to realize that he wants to spend time with us. We need to let him call out his image in us. Maybe we relate more to the Pharisee if we're honest. We hold on to those gold dots as our identity. To make us feel better, we, we judge others to help us escape from the constant judging of ourselves. Our job is to stay clean, to get more gold dots for people to say how good we are and to clean those black dots of others not realizing that the only thing that can remove those gold dots from others is experiencing the love of God. As we journey towards Mandela Day, I want to remind us of those three challenges in the It Starts With Me Mandela Day challenge, which all relate to this message this morning. The first challenge is to honor everyone we encounter or think about. And I want to come back to Jesus' three words to Zacchaeus, because I really believe those speak into how we can honor people. And so the first is Zacchaeus. Using a person's name is really powerful. And I'm not talking about a shortened version of the name so we can pronounce it. And I also think we should know their surname. Do we know the full names of cleaners, of car guards, of those we interact with? Perhaps it's beggars on a regular basis. Jesus said, I must stay at your house. Jesus was led by the Spirit, not by his own agenda. They did this experiment at a theological college. So the students had to write an essay on the Good Samaritan and they had to rush across the quad to a panel that was going to assess them and they were told to hurry. But they had placed in the quad someone in great pain and suffering crying out. But the majority of the students just rushed past this individual. Their agenda was more important. What about us? Are we like those theological students or are we like Jesus? Are we about our own agenda or about the Spirit's prompting? And also, are we worried about what others might say? 
Are outsiders insiders in our life like they were with Jesus or do they remain on the outside? The final thing that Jesus said was nothing. How tempting it is to try and play God, to come up with our fix-it plans for those people to try and scrub away their black dots. And we need to be reminded that it's only by experiencing the love of God that those black dots will fall, fall away. That we need to call out the image of God in everyone we meet. So the first challenge was about honoring everyone we encounter. And the second challenge is the 67 minute reflection. But I'm going to encourage us, it's, it's a big reflection. I'm going to encourage us to spend a bit of time each day in the week ahead on it. And there's going to be daily devotions focused on each grouping in the rainbow. So if you haven't been getting them, your minister does get them daily or you can contact me and I'll send them through to you. So it starts with me. We start in the center today and Monday reflecting on ourselves at our funeral. What would we want people to say about how we saw others? How should that inform our living today? On Tuesday, we reflect on those close to us. And in all these sections, we, we look at those that we have judged and those that have judged us. And perhaps those close to us can be the hardest one. Perhaps a parent that we have felt hurt or, or angered by. And perhaps it's a sibling that we have judged them because of the differences and, and felt that they are less than. Perhaps it's our own children that we have judged and we felt that their behavior has impacted us because we've wanted to show those gold stars to the world. We write these names down and we journey with Jesus, asking him to help us forgive them or maybe asking forgiveness ourselves and asking the Holy Spirit to show us how we can honor them. On, on Wednesday, we move on to those who impact our lives, teachers, school friends, work colleagues, the boss, and we journey in the same way. On Thursday, the focus is on those unseen by us, whether it's the shop assistant, the car guard, maybe even someone who works in our own homes. How would they say you make them feel? And it's not just about our words. Often we don't realize what our tone, what our eyes convey. The eyes are the window of the heart. We need to be seeing them as Jesus does. On Friday, we journey with people we have judged because of the group they fall into, whether it be the convicts, the homosexual, the person of a different skin color to us, whether black or white, the person of little education or little income. It's about us and them. Friends, there is no us and them in the kingdom of God. And just a reminder on the Bombay Project website under the Mandela page, under the, the link other resources. We've got some fantastic secular movies to challenge on this and there's some great Christian resources. So go, go there and, and, and journey with them. And a reminder of the third challenge is to live on less than 10 Rand a day for the day. That's next Saturday. So we won't ask you to journey with that for the week and to give the money you save to an organization that's investing in the long-term transformation of lives, not just focused on handouts. So I'm sure you probably have one that you want to give to. But if you don't, I'd really love to encourage you to invest in the Bombay Project. And we will use that money wisely to, to invest in transforming the disadvantaged communities where we're involved and growing the kingdom of God. Friends, this is a deep, life-changing journey of the heart. Jesus sees past the black dots and the gold stars. He sees our real need that deep thirst in us for love, acceptance, and security. And that's where he meets us. And as he does, those gold stars and black dots fall off. And we need to do the same for others. Galatians 3, 28, paraphrased, as I said last week, there is neither black nor white, domestic worker nor business owner, Malawian nor South African, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. Let's see others and ourselves through the eyes of Jesus. Let's pass this challenge on to others and impact our nation. Friends, it starts with us. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for seeing us, for seeing past the black dots and gold stars to your image in us. Holy Spirit, continue to open our eyes to those black dots and gold stars that we hold on to. And as we have a time of quiet, Lord, remind us now of our identity in you, that we are children of the living God 
And because of that identity, we have the confidence to let go of the labels the world would put on us or that we would put on ourselves. Lord, give us courage and discipline to journey in the week ahead with what it means to see others and ourselves through your eyes. Where there is pain and hurt, remind us that you know what that feels like and you journey with us in the path to your freedom and your life. Jesus, may we see with your respectacles that our lives may shine your love to those around us and give glory to your name. We pray this, Jesus, in your precious name. Amen. As we come to that time of sharing the peace with one another, let's reflect on Mandy's words and say to each other, I see you with the eyes of Jesus. And the other person responds, Jesus' peace be with you. Let's try that. I see you with the eyes of Jesus. Jesus', Jesus peace be, be with, with you. you. Vicky, I see you with the eyes of Jesus. Listen, Jesus I see you with the eyes you. of Jesus. Jesus' peace be with you. Blessing, I see you with the eyes of Jesus. Jesus' peace be with you. Hank, I see you with the eyes of Jesus. Jesus' peace be with you. Vicky, I see you with the eyes of Jesus. Jesus' peace be with you. How did that go? Important to remember that we are always in fellowship, here and with you wherever you are. Won't you move now to your communion area where you've set up so that we can celebrate with one another. One of the things about the communion is that we understand that God inhabits this place, inhabits your home, inhabits the elements that you're offering for him to transform into his body and blood for us. One of the things we're doing is inviting Jesus into our hearts, into our lives, as symbolically we take of him. So the Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Friends, lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right. It is our duty, our honour and our joy to give God thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. We're reminded that it is through him we were created in his image. Through him we were freed from sin and death, and through him and the gift of the Holy Spirit we have life. And so we join with the ancient words of Scripture echoing around heaven as we say together, Holy, Holy, Holy God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Lord, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Jesus, in the night that he was betrayed, took bread. He gave you thanks and he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup. He gave it, gave you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so let's proclaim together the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, proclaiming his saving death and resurrection and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect sacrifice. Accept through him this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. He is our great high priest and grant that we who eat and drink this bread and this drink from this cup be renewed by your spirit and to grow 
into his likeness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, all honour and glory are yours, Father, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. Let's join together as we pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Do you want to take the bread that you have? And with me, we break it together. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. knowing that Jesus sees you through his eyes of love, compassion and acceptance. Draw near and receive his body and his blood, broken and shed for you. Come, because he loves you. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ. the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Maybe as you finish off, you can just spend a moment in quiet as we just reflect on the mystery and the wonder of what we've been able to do together right now. The psalmist reminds us to give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. His mercy endures forever. So let us go out from here. And as we do so, we commit ourselves with those wonderful prayer. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. So may the peace of God, that peace which passes all human understanding, Keep each of your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those whom you love now and always. Amen. Amen. Remember what Mandy asked us to do? To send feedback of the creative activities that you're going to be doing this week so we can celebrate together and share with one another. So go out from here to see others as Jesus sees them, to live and work to his praise and his glory. In, In the, the name, name of Christ, Christ. Amen. Amen.
So friends, just to remind you, we've been challenged in a whole lot of ways and how we can honor one another in this coming week, particularly next Saturday being Mandela Day. Henk, which one of these are you going to be uh, focusing your attention on? Number two, the 60 minutes honor reflection. Yes, and I think, in fact, Mandy during this week is going to help us to unpack that uh, in our weekday messages. And certainly in the handout that you are receiving, you will have more details on this. So please get involved. Reminder to send pictures, prayers, poems in anonymously if necessary so we can celebrate together. Families, get your kids involved and let's make this journey a wonderful journey of celebration as a community. May the Lord bless us and watch over us. May the Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Thanks for joining us today and have a great Sunday.